everything has got some history behind. You are fifth year student, you are going to be a doctor. I am also, once I was a student like you. So, I started my life to become a doctor, not by chance or not by accident, by choice. I became a doctor by choice. Again, I became a urologist not by chance, not by accident. That is also by choice. And especially I am interested to treat urology patient mainly prostate. Again, it is by choice. Today we are discussing one of our patient. As you, as you see, there is one of our patient, patient having problem with prostate. For you as a MBBA student to pass your exam, you are to know the prostate as a whole. Because it is very common problem all over the world as well as in our country. To know the prostate as a MBBA student, as a fifth year student, why we will study this prostate? Why? As an examiner, why, what is our need to know the prostate? That is the basic issue. Why we are giving our time? That means, why we read the prostate? Number one, you have to pass the MBBS, basic need. That's why we are here. Number two, you will get written question from this prostate disease. That is another thing. Number three, long case you will get. Definitely, this is the case. Long case you will get in your examination. Long case you will get. That is another thing. That's why we are here to read the patient and the prostate problem. Number four is specimen. You will get a specimen of prostate in your examination. And you will get x-ray, some x-ray related to prostate you will get in your exam. Number, the operative surgery, another section of your MBBS exam is operative surgery. There also you will face this prostate problem. And in one word, without prostate, there is no way to pass MBBS exam. That is the reality. That's why we are today studying our patient with prostate problem. Now, problem with prostate. What are the problem with prostate? Problem, how many ways the prostate can create problem with human being? Number one is benign enlargement of the prostate. That is the commonest problem with prostate usually patients suffer from. Next is carcinoma prostate. That is the second commonest problem with prostate. And number three is inflammatory disease of the prostate. In broad headings, these are the three problems patients suffer from with these prostate diseases. And if we want to discuss, this is the diagrammatic representation, that is the body. That is the, if you cut the body that you will see, that is the bladder, prostate, prostatic urethra pubic bone, that is the rectum behind and that is the cross section of the prostate in the dead body. And in front you will see there is the diagrammatic representation, where it is situated. It is situated just at the base of the bladder where the urethra is starting, encircling the commencement of the urethra. That is the area where prostate is situated. So, this prostate, if you see, it is a fibromusculoglandular organ. Three components are there fibrous tissue, muscular tissue, and glandular tissue. And this comprises 50% is glandular tissue, 25% is fibrous tissue, and another 25% is muscular tissue. These are the three components comprising this gland. And if you go further, then you will see this gland has been classified by different authors in different ways to understand it clearly. 
that is the zonal distribution peripheral zone which is also called the cancerous zone as we have already mentioned cancer prostate is one of the disease prostate suffer from so this peripheral zone usually cancer occurs more in the peripheral zone central zone and the transitional zone if you see the picture you will see that is the peripheral zone p and z transitional zone the zone which covers the urethra surrounds the urethra and the central zone so transitional zone is the zone of bps peripheral zone is the zone of malignancy and transitional zone in between that is the distribution and this is the way of distribution to understand the total thing the distribution of diseases if anybody ask where the cancer incidence of cancer of prostate more common answer is peripheral zone bpa is more common transitional zone transitional zone who is encircles the urethra as transitional zone bpa is more common so when prostate enlarges the portion surrounding the urethra so obstructive features more in case of malignancy as it is in the peripheral zone so obstructive feature is not that common but transitional zone is surrounding the urethra that's why transitional zone produces obstructive feature more than that of malignancy that's why this prostate malignancy is called the silent killer of elderly males it is called silent killer as because this prostate malignancy even can metastasize without any obstructive uropathy that's why it is called silent killer of elderly males and this glandular distribution again outer layer consist of external posterior gland proper and the inner layer is called the periurethral gland this is where it has been distributed the glandular pattern of the prostate gland if you go further you will see to simplify the thing with the advancement of the change some change within the human body is inevitable this changes in the life as age advances vision changes so some person needs change of vision some spec glasses is required that is normal again with the advancement of the says hair become black to gray that is normal it will normal with that advancement of the age it will occur and then again with the advancement of the the skin becomes wrinkled with the advancement of the age so it is not a disease it is the aging process same way with the advancement of the age prostate we will get enlargement that is not a disease itself so if this enlargement causes obstruction of the flow then it is a problem but simply enlargement is not a disease with the advancement of the life normal changes is there so prostate enlargement is among these normal changes so if these changes causes obstruction then it is a problem that is the understanding simply enlargement of the prostate is not a disease when it causes obstruction then it creates some problem that is the disease that is the understanding so if you see here benign disease of the prostate due to hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the fib fibromuscular stroma and glandular elements mainly affecting transitional zone that i have already mentioned and about 70 to 80% it is the transitional zone and if you see this is the verumen tenum if you go from distal proximally you will see the urethra you will see the verumen tenum and lateral lobes right and left lateral lobes and these two lateral lobes and that is the prostatic urethra and then you will go more proximally you will see the bladder so that is the endoscopic view of the prostatic urethra two lateral lobes and the verumen tenum and the verumen tenum is the guideline that is the place where the external sphincter level so normally we are continent continent means we can control the urine 
by external sprinter and internal sprinter. This is the external sprinter side where the virumentanum is the level and internal sphincter is the bladder neck. So, when we go for operation, then this is the verumentanum is the guideline. We do not resect beyond this verumentanum. That is why it is the endoscopic view of the prostatic urethra, where we can see the two lateral lobes, right and left, and the verumentanum. If you go further, prevalence of this disease. If you see in autopsy, this is the prevalence and clinical symptomatic prostate again age 50 to 70, 70 percent and above 70, this is the distribution of the prostate and it has been studied in this country and this is study done by me, first in this country by me, how many elderly males suffer from this problem in this country and this study done in one of the Upazala in Gajipur and it has been documented that 39.5 percent of elderly male of this community suffers from enlargement of the prostate. 39.5 percent is a big amount of people in this country suffering from this enlarged prostate. That is the study done in this country and that is the study protocol we use that is the ambulance we use this ambulance and what is the etiology of the BPAs? Number one, the exact cause not known, what is the cause behind, but there are some hypotheses, it is multifactorial disease, many factors related to produce this problem and endocrine control. Testosterone is the main cause, if testosterone is absent, no enlargement of the prostate. If in the boyhood, if testis is removed, the factory from where the testosterone develops, the patient, the person will not develop any BPAs or enlargement of the prostate. That is confirmed. So, it is that endocrine control and estrogen and endogen synergistic action, it creates some synergistic effect to go for enlargement of the prostate and decreased autopsies of the cells of the prostate gland. That is also another hypothesis which helps in the enlargement of the prostate gland and some genetic factor is also related in the prostate and factors responsible for BPAs, one of the A's presence of dihydrotestosterone that is another thing, racial factor is related, genetic factors mentioned and diabetes mellitus, hypertension, these are also factors related with this disease. And then what is the pathogenesis? Pathogenesis means how the problem arises. So, you see this is hyperplasia, hypertropin, hyperplasia enlargement of the prostate gland due to enlargement mainly in the median lobe. When the median lobe enlarges, it blocks the urethra. So, when it blocks the urethra, urine cannot pass. So, mm -hmm. it causes the flow is obstructed. So, urine is flow of urine is blocked. So, urine is retained within the bladder. So, ultimately due to retention of the bladder, what will be the? There will be the back pressure, bladder will be distended. Then the muscle bladder will undergo into overactive, then the muscle will undergo into hypertrophy that is called detrosol muscle hypertrophy. That is the muscle bladder of the bladder muscle is called the detrosol muscle. Like if this biceps is exercised, biceps undergo hypertrophy, same way to overcome the obstruction the detrosol muscle undergo into hypertrophy. When the muscle undergo the hypertrophy, in between the hypertrophic muscle, the mucosa becomes laxed and the mucosa then it produces trabeculation. Then trabeculation when more distended, then there is diverticulum formation. Ultimately, detrosor failure will be there. Then bladder will not be able to contract. Then blood that is called detrosor failure. So, there will be chronic retention. That is the pathogenesis that is the back pressure ultimately the pressure will be reflected to the ureter there will be hydro ureteronephrosis ultimately there will be renal failure. So, many a time we get patient with long lasting BPAs not taken any care patient may present with bilateral hydro ureteronephrosis with renal failure Maybe many time we get this group of patient also. Then if you go further this is the representation. If Thus, blocking the flow of urine by a tight, 
ligature at the level of the prostate. It is something like that in case of BPAs. Then if you go further, that is the after effect. What I have mentioned already, it is the benign prostatic hypertrophy and hyperplasia, that is back pressure, that is hydrouteronephrosis. That is demonstrated here. And if you go pathological changes, this is simply demonstration of the pathological changes. What I have mentioned that given here. And clinical symptoms, there are some symptoms and signs. Laboratory findings, imaging and some additional test we go for our patient. And that is the symptom. Symptoms again it has been demonstrated in two groups. One is obstructive group, another is irritative group. These are the obstructive symptoms. That is hesitancy, poor flow, intermittent steam, dribbling, sensation of poor bladder emptying and these are the thing and irritative features is frequency, urgency, noxuria, dysuria, urge incontinence, noxtral incontinence. These are the different groups you can divide. This is the symptoms, obstructive symptoms and irritative symptoms. If you go further, what you will see, what are the signs? Signs is general examination some signs, digital rectal examination some signs and some focal neurological, neurological examination signs. General features, patient may be pallor, there may be some palpable kidney, if it is back pressure effect, hydroetonephrosis, you may get palpable kidney and in distended bladder in case of chronic detention you may get and genitalia you should examine sometimes, you can get genitalia abnormality and digital leg -like examination, only in examination who is, is possible to palpate the prostate. In that case you will get the size of the prostate, whether you can get the upper limit, surface of the prostate, mucosa is free or not free consistency of the prostate, whether it is firm, whether it is hard, whether there is any irregular surface, whether there is any nodule, median sulcus is obliterated or it is prominent or something, any abnormality in the digital rectal examination. That is very important finding. And next is focal neurological features. Sometimes this detention may be some neurological abnormality. So if you introduce your finger, the tone of the anal muscle that is anal tone will indicate whether this retention is due to prostate or it is due to some neurological cause that also you will be able to understand that is the findings. Then laboratory test, urine analysis, serum urea, serum creatinine, prostate specific antigen. So creatinine, urine analysis means whether this patient is old, diabetes or any other thing, serum urea also reflects the renal failure, creatinine also reflects the renal failure and prostate specific antigen. This is one of the parameters who is, which will guide you whether the patient having any malignancy or not. That is very important parameter blood test which will guide you whether the patient having any malignancy or not. If PSA is high, then we will search for confirmation of malignancy or not. That is DRE finding, then biopsy and further confirmation whether it is benign prostate or malignant prostate. Imaging other test, ultrasonography, then trans, that is transsexual ultrasonography scan and plain x-ray KOB. Plain x-ray KOB, why plain x-ray KOB? Sometimes question arises, why plain x-ray KOB? There may be secondary stone or in case of carcinoma prostate, there may be metastasis in the bone. In case of metastasis to, uh, in the bone, this metastasis is osteoblastic. The bone in case of cancer prostate, there is bone formation. But other cases, there is osteolytic, but there is osteoblastic. That also gives the information of X-ray KOB. And again, information from ultrasound, what information you will get? Information you will get size of the prostate, ecotexture of the prostate, intravesical partition of the prostate, maximum systematic capacity, the patient can hold the urine, was void residue, these are the very important findings we will get from the ultrasonography, change in the bladder wall that we can read from the ultrasonography and any other pathology in the bladder. Many a time it is one of the common cash question in ultrasonography, what findings you will get? These are the common findings from ultrasonography we will get. And upper tract abnormality, whether there is back pressure effect, whether there is hydronephrosis or hydroureter, these are also ultrasonography report we can get from ultrasonography. And if you go urophlebometry, 
that is the tracing that means whether the flow of urine is normal or abnormal that is also another finding we get from here that is the urophilometry the upper one is normal that is the curve like that and the lower one is obstructive if you trace the flow by our tracing machine we will get that upper one is the normal urophilo and lower one is the obstructive urophilo that is the another test we will find and then uh, additional test we will do other tests this is the usual investigation done for this patient to identify other problem also and this is the scoring this is another score that is international prostatic symptom score there are these are the parameters seven parameters and each score is five up to five and the 37 is the total score and scoring is also important the symptom score the and scoring also evaluated to categorize the patient in what group the patient is that is also and these are the degree what degree patient is suffering from first degree second degree or third degree and finally we just following these factors we think before planning operation age of the patient symptom score of the patient what symptom patient having and then digital rectal examination then ultrasound finding urophilometry finding psa level and complication any or not what are the complication whether there is any stone whether there is any hematuria whether there is any chronic retention whether there is any hernia due to straining whether there is hemorrhoids due to straining these are the complication associated with this prostate this is also evaluated before going for any operation these are the things we think before operation treatment what are the treatment treatment is watchful waiting mild symptoms only simply watch no treatment given in next group pharmacotherapy there are two types of medicine we offer one is for gland to prevent further growth another is to muscle that means contraction of the muscle is prevented that is and for fibrous tissue no medicine is given that is one is 5 alpha reductase inhibitor another is to inhibit the muscle contraction that is the receptor blocker two pharmacotherapy is given and for surgery there are different types of surgery there is minimally invasive and that is invasive procedure but gold standard is again all over the world is tens erectural resection of the prostate that usually done and wasteful waiting this group of uh, patient what is wasteful waiting and we will not go for in details pharmacotherapy this we will not go for in details then for surgical treatment many treatments given but trp again it is the gold standard and in our time we started with transvesical prostatectomy then millins prostatectomy now for last 20 years i am doing tensiotherapy of the prostate then what is tensiotherapy of the prostate what is it this is the procedure daily we are doing towards the case in this hospital through the urethra we are going and we are just taking the prostate out in sips so that the obstructing tissue is taken out that is the procedure we usually follow in everywhere and also in our in our hospital preoperative preparation how to prepare the patient that is the normal preparation like other patient also then a uh, procedure this is the total procedure how we follow and follow all over the world and then uh, these are the catheter used this is the procedure this is the total operative setup how the surgeon do the usually how the surgeon does the procedure that is the screening not patient is there surgeon is there and locking the screen surgeon is going for operation that is the thing and that is already i have mentioned that is the view endoscopic view and then we will complete it by doing some complication what are the complication procedure we have mentioned then we will see the complication immediate complication and late complication during operation there may be some problem and there may be some intermediate and the late complication there may be and immediate complication mainly hemorrhage hemorrhage may be there may be some retention due to hemorrhage there may be clot retention one of the important complication these are the complication and in conclusion that is the thing transurethral resection of the prostate it is one of the operation as we know the prostate operation has got many procedure we have mentioned already wasteful waiting pharmacotherapy and operative procedure there are many operative procedure but gold standard is transurethral resection of the prostate 
And this is the operation we will now demonstrate the transurethral dissection of the prostate. This is the endoscope. The endoscope is introduced and whole urethra is visualized. You see this is the sphincteric area and this then it is it is the bladder neck and this bladder neck is resected at the 6 o'clock position. Then from the 6 o'clock position this lobe cutting the floor. After clearing the floor then it is going to the left lateral lobe and this left lateral lobe tissue is resecting and this is from the proximal part of the gland this left lateral lobe is resecting and this is the blood vessel the blood vessel is coagulated by this coagulating lobe. So, resection and stoppage of bleeding that is coagulating process is going on simultaneously. The, the sieves of tissue is cutting and it is going into the bladder which will be taken out subsequently. Uh, this is the procedure and this is the lobe left lateral lobe is cutting starting from the proximal and coming gradually to the lapex of the prostate that is the towards the verumentanum. And verumentanum is the landmark as we have already mentioned the it is the landmark that lobe will never cross the verumentanum. If it cross the verumentanum then the sphincter will be destroyed and patient will be incontinent. Uh, that is the landmark in each and every step we follow the landmark that is the verumentanum. You see we are just completing the left lobe of the prostate and all the sieves going back into the bladder by the flow of fluid and this fluid we use usually dextrogen aqua not any electrolyte that is the left lobe already complete you see and already left lobe is near to be complete and this is the blood vessel and we are coagulating the blood vessel here by diathermy this is the way. And now you see this is the left lobe more or less complete this is the this is the way we are completing the left lobe of the prostate gland and this is the left lobe, and this is the floor and this is the remaining portion of the left lobe of the gland that we are resecting now and then you will see the verumentanum yes this is the verumentanum you see and this is the apical portion of the tissue of the left lobe and one lobe of the gland already resected and same thing will be repeated this is the verumentanum this is the landmark then is going and this is the portion is resected. So, one lobe is complete in the same way another lobe will be resected. this is the verumentanum that is the landmark uh, in the same way we will resect the right loop also and this is the fine tuning is doing the fine floor of that tissue a prosthetic bed is cleaning make it smooth and these are the some of the muscle fiber we will see that will give the signal that we have completed the resection of left loop of the gland. And now this is the fine work we are doing this is the excess tissue obstructing the flow of urine we are just making it smooth. This is the resection procedure we are cutting and removing the prostate tissue. In the same way we will complete the right side of the gland. This is the way of resection. And if the gland is this is the very moment, if the gland is very big, in that case one complication may arise, but this is not now that common as because we can resect very fast and that is TRP syndrome that is TR syndrome that is not that much common we can resect very fast. So, this complication is very rare. Now, it is the right lobe we started the right lobe in the same way we will continue the right lobe and right lobe resection will be completed in the same procedure we have completed the left lobe this is the way we complete. Now, if you go further we will see that at the end of the resection we will see the whether operation is successful or not. In that particular case we will see the water test. What is that water test? Bladder is distended by the fluid and we see whether the flow of urine through the penis is normal or not. That flow is tested that is called water test. If water test is positive that means flow is normal 
then we can think that operation is successful. That is called water test that we will see here. After fulfilling the bladder, we will just compress the bladder, I will see the flow. You see that is the flow, that is the flow of urine through the urethra. So, it indicates that the flow is good. So, water flow, water test is positive, it means resection is satisfactory. So, operation is successful, patient will void without any obstruction. Now, we will go for discussion. If you go for discussion, this is our patient. This is our patient, we can talk to our patient. This patient presented with catheter in situ and he is waiting for operation. Up to this, are there any question? Any question? Any question? Any question you can, you can ask, any question. We have discussed more or less we have covered what are the basic understanding about the prostate. No question. If there is no question then teacher will understand two things. Either you have understood total very nice or you have understood nothing. All or nothing. Yes. Sir, patient the Very good question. That is one very good question. Patient has got retention. Thank you. Patient has got retention. Long time retention. What may be the complication? One of the very good question. One of the very good question because patient chronic retention not taking any treatment. Number one as I have already mentioned their bladder will be distended. So, even, even that bladder will fail, dectos or failure, even after removing the obstruction patient may not pass urine satisfactorily. For urination two things required, one is voluntary, another is involuntary. That, that means autonomic and somatic, both part is required. Bladder itself needs contraction for expulsion of urine. So, if long lasting obstruction, the detressor fails. So, even in that stage, if more lasting patient may present with renal failure. And if kidney is not failed, bladder fail, even then if obstructive tissue is removed, prostate even after removal of the prostate patient may not void satisfactorily. As because bladder is failed, bladder muscle fail to contract. That is the problem in long lasting obstructing prostate. That is the long lasting case. That is why what we do, if a patient with long retention, in that case we introduce one catheter and we keep that catheter for 21 days to reduce the size of the bladder to regain its capacity, then we go for resection. That is one of the technique we usually follow for this long lasting obstructive uropathy with prostate. Any other question? There are many questions, there are many questions. Suppose one of the student class, class tell him, we are investigating the case who is PSA, normal PSA. If PSA is abnormally high, what we will do? That is one of the common question and this question may be asked by your teacher. You are investigating PSA. Why you are investigating PSA? We are suspecting that whether patient having malignancy or not. If patient having malignancy, if you are getting PSA high, what you will do? That is a good question. You should confirm whether you are suspecting that patient may have malignancy, right? So then how will you proceed with this patient? As one of the, as I have mentioned that you will go for normal screening, serum creatinine, urea, urine analysis and PSA, right? PSA is high, what you will do? Definitely we will go for something else, what you will do? If PSA is high, you need confirmation. What you will do? Yes, you will go for prostatic biopsy. You will go for prostatic biopsy. If prostatic biopsy give you that, yes, it is adenocarcinoma of the prostate, then you will go for treatment of cancer prostate. So, next step is if PSA is high, 
next step is confirmation of malignancy by biopsy. Then question, if you can answer this question, then to give you more marks, the examiner may ask, how we will take this biopsy? Technique of this biopsy is again, there are different techniques. One is DRE guided biopsy. You go for DRE and you get, if there is hard area, take biopsy from that hard area. Another thing is trans guided biopsy. You have seen trans guided transrectal ultrasonography guided. You see by ultrasonography suspected area, you take biopsy. Or you can go for MRI. You go for MRI, suspicious area, take biopsy. So, there are the different technique of taking biopsy for accuracy. Posterior is a big area. So, you may miss the target. That is why you take biopsy by different techniques. One is blind biopsy, another is finger guided biopsy, another is ultrasound guided biopsy, even you can go for MRI guided biopsy. So, these are the, if you can answer, you will get honors mark. So, that is the way of confirming your diagnosis of malignancy. So, this is the way you will proceed. And if you ask question from our patient, then how will you go with our patient? Kothodine Samosha Apnar? Samosha Sir. Niyasha Pajita Ida Dho. Kothodine Samosha? Samosha Sir. Ek Maas. Ek Maas. Ki Samosha Pratham? সকালে <laughs> কাতরা খুলে ফেলছে তারপরে কুলি আলে কি আর একদিন বালা আছে ঘরের দিন আবার আবার বন্ধ হয়ে গেছে সেই বন্ধনে এখনো আছে এখনো আছে সো হিস্ট্রি ইজ হি হি হ্যাড হিস্ট্রি অফ রিটেনশন ফলোইং রিটেনশন হি ইন্ট্রোডিউসড ক্যাথেটার আফটার টু ডেজ হি রিমুভ দি ক্যাথেটার হি রিমুভ দি ক্যাথেটার বাট আফটার রিমুভাল অফ দ্য ক্যাথেটার अगेन হি ডেভেলপ রিটেনশন সো থিং ইজ দ্যাট দিস ক্যাথেটার after introducing the catheter, temporarily retention is relieved, but again he developed retention. So, this retention is refractory, not responding to single catheterization. That is why he has got admitted here. And thing is that he has got some problem and in this age, this fissure definitely number one thinking is enlargement of the prostate. And Catheter is what else it could be. It may be a stricture in the urethra, but catheter already in. So, that is already rolled out. A stricture is not there. So, possibility is either BPH or malignancy, maybe two. So, now we are, we have taken history and we are just working on this patient, what problem we his prostate. So, there are some investigation. We are going this investigation. We have done ultrasonography. We have done serum creatinine. We have checked urine and we have done other investigations like X-ray test and serum PSA. Everything we are, he is in the process of journey for diagnosis. And then we will go for further study. We will establish it whether it is BPAs or suspicious malignancy, if it is purely BPH, then we will select him for operation tomorrow morning for transurethral dissection of the prostate, right? That is why he is waiting. Every investigation, already more or less investigation complete, he is waiting for operation preoperative checkup. He is waiting for preoperative check, checkup in the evening, if everything is okay. If everything is okay, he will go for transurethral dissection tomorrow morning. In ultrasonography, enlarged prostate, prostate volume is 42. Parenchyma is homogeneous. 
and median lobe is intravesical protrusion of the gland is seen. That means median lobe is enlarged. That's why it is not responding by catheter. So, and there is ultrasonography figure and median lobe also visualized in this ultrasonography report. So, I think he is a candidate for cystoscopic evaluation and tense urethral dissection of the prostate. So, in the evening, he will go for free anesthetic checkup. Then, we will, if he is fit for tense urethral dissection, tomorrow morning, he will go to the operation theater and we will go for tense urethral dissection of the prostate. That is the case. Anything you want to know or nothing to know? You have got discussion, you have got patient, you have got everything regarding prostate. Now patient with catheter in situ. Many a time question asked, this is one form of patient you get, patient with catheter in situ. How other way patient may present to you? Patient may come with simple history of prostatic that is disturbances, irritative, irritative fissure or obstructive fissure, not catheter, simply disturbance of normal life. Patient may come, patient may come with chronic retention, the standard bladder, simple, not with catheter, many a time we get. Patient may come with hematuria, patient may come, patient may come with renal failure, there is no catheter. But long lasting case with renal failure. Patient may come, this prostate problem, no urinary symptom, no retention, but with pathological fracture. That means cancer prostate with pathological fracture, no urinary symptom. That is also not uncommon. That is why it is called silent killer. Already there is metastasis without any urinary symptoms. As we know, the malignancy is peripheral zone. As it is peripheral zone, urinary flow is not obstructed, but already it is metastasized to bones. Already there is some fracture. Already it metastasis to the brain. Many a patient we get some patient with some psychiatric abnormality. People thinking that the patient is mad, but CT scan of the brain, we get some metastasis in the brain. We, we have got this group of patient also and that metastasis from the prostate. So that is why it is called the silent killer. That is the portion in this age you need screening. After 50, all males should go for screening of the prostate to exclude whether there is any danger, patient is in danger zone or not. If PSA is high, then patient should to be in watchful waiting whether it is increasing or there is any fissures of malignancy. That is the thing. We should check the patient after 50 whether there is any chance of malignancy or not. So, this is the history regarding prostate. So, we should know prostate, you should know prostate to pass the MBBS exam. Any question? If there is no question, it is high time to leave as because it is already too exhausted time. Thank you very much.